Yay! Hi, so I'm Ninda. Uh, I'm wearing these big weird virus earrings, uh, which I think is up. And yay, hi Jason. I heard stuff about you from your colleagues, uh, Megan and Alex, when I was in the Arctic with them. Hi Megan, yay. Um, which is quite important. I also, oh yeah, I'm in Birmingham in England. Uh, it's quite noisy because woohoo. So this is where I am. Uh, I'm sitting in a kind of crossroad on the River Coal in Birmingham. It's 6 p.m. here, which is kind of weird and confusing. But hopefully you can hear me, even though it's quite noisy. I'm also quite noisy. So basically, a year ago, almost exactly, I was traveling in the Arctic with Megan and Alex, who are both... Yay, thanks, Jason. Megan and Alex are both your amazing teachers and one of the reasons I was in the Arctic was to make work but to really think about ecology and what ecology means and what as people we can do to kind of think through our environment but now we're all stuck at home so you know uh, that kind of major travel isn't an option and so I started thinking a bit about what it means to be kind of in an environment at home. I might also be in the way of people trying to cross the bridge. Hang on. So this is, uh, I'm going to turn you around. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the mill. Yeah, it's just that way. Yeah, like five minutes. So I'm just telling people where the mill is. There's a mill, which is also kind of amazing that I get flour from. So there's the river, 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 people. So, uh, when I was thinking about what I could do while stuck at home because of COVID-19, I started reading this quite amazing zine, which I bought in New York when I was almost stuck in New York at the beginning of the virus. Uh, it's by someone called Emma Percy, uh, and she's done a lot of really amazing zines. And you can see this text here. It says, if you haven't been living under a rock, Yay, thank you. You may have realized that climate change is dra drastically affecting life as we know it on Earth and faster than anyone initially thought. If you've been paying a bit more attention, you know that communities all over the world are engaged in conflicts over environmental destruction. Carries on. And then it says all of this information can be very overwhelming, especially when our media feeds us a constant barrage of alarming headlines. Um, and the author carries on saying, I'd like to propose that although the future will be chaotic, all is not lost. And serious action taken by a critical mass of people on a grassroots level will add up and drive significant social change. So I really thought that was important and hopeful and exciting. And one of the things that this zine does is it tries to get you to connect to your local environment and to think about ecologies in a really local way. I'll try not look at my shoes. Ooh, the river. So one thing about this river is it looks very like nice uh, and kind of quite countryside-ish. I'd really recommend you sort of Google Birmingham or Spark Hill specifically, which is where I live in England. Uh, this is very much not the image you would have of this river. So if I tell anyone that I like the river, they look at me like I'm mad. It's usually known as kind of being really full of trash, basically. So, how I came to the river is, one of the questions in this scene says, what watershed do you live in within? And it says, when a drop of water falls on the ground, what body of water will it eventually flow into? What body of water will that flow into? And I thought that was a really, really important question for thinking about ecology in a really local way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you underwater for like 30 seconds, so you can, there's some people, so you can think about the answer to that question so if a drop of water falls right next to where you are now where is it gonna end up and where will that end up so just think about that for a bit
Uh oh. Oh, I paused because I went underwater. Hang on. I'll fix it. Uh, are you back? Hello? Hmm. <laughs> uh, it says it's still there. Mm -mm -mm. Hi. Is it working? Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I think it's working again. Uh, is it writhing is maybe better than... Uh, is it working? <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I need to move out of the way of some people, uh, which I will do now. <laughs> so, unfortunately, maybe you didn't get to see... Hi, again. <laughs> Someone else is here too. Uh, maybe you didn't get to see underwater, which is a pity, but um, that happened. You were underwater, so whether you got to see the underwater or not. And so, yeah, everyone's back. Yes. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Thought about what drop, where a drop of water would go. Thought about the river and where it goes. And that was kind of the beginning of this project that I'm working on now. Uh, also in lockdown, so here in the UK we could go on one walk a day, that was kind of the rules, uh, and now our government has just gone a bit mad and opened up leisure spaces and it's a bit intense, but anyway, so I was going on this one walk a day, mostly along this river, and the other thing that I was doing was just something like really simple, I didn't know how to kind of I didn't know how to make work because I'm sure everyone is struggling to make work so what I did was I started kind of experimenting with really basic craft stuff like tie dye so maybe you can see here I started kind of doing experiments with natural tie dye of things that I had at home so this cloth here is made with red cabbage uh, and kind of tie-dyed. This is turmeric that I had at home. Uh, this is also red cabbage and bicarbonate of soda. So basically, I didn't know why I was doing it, but I kind of just started making these tie-dye fabrics at the same time as I was walking up and down the river and trying to think about what it meant to be close to this water and to kind of really think about it be part of it think of it as my nature as my like local ecology uh, another thing I started doing which is a bit mad is uh, laminating flowers <laughs> uh, that I found ah is there a way to end the meeting the video Jason's fixing it I think Megan oh wait I can try ah I fixed it I fixed it yes sorry okay this is very chaotic, but that's kind of fitting for my practice. So hopefully I fixed it. Okay, so backtrack. Uh, here is some tie dye uh, that I made using red cabbage. Uh, and here is some tie dye and fabric I made using turmeric. Uh, so really just like, what can I make? I don't really know. I'll use what I have at home. Then the other thing I found in like the cupboard was a laminating machine. So when I was walking around said river that I'm sitting on, uh, being in people's way, uh, I started to kind of look at the flowers and stuff that I could find. Uh, and then I started laminating it. And maybe you can even see here, there's also a few strands of horse hair. Uh, I also found some horses, long story. Anyway, so I was like, I'm going to start laminating these flowers. Also a pro tip if anyone's interested in flower pressing uh, is that you can, or you can dry flowers in a microwave in two minutes instead of having to press them between books for months. So I was doing these very kind of um, not high art activities, I guess, very crafty, kind of didn't know where it was going. And 
also collecting things as I was sort of walking around. And then I realized that what I needed to do to really become closer with, yeah, it's pure chaos, I know, <laughs> to really come closer to this river and to my ecologies and to where I live and my home was to really immerse myself in it quite literally. And something that uh, Megan Alex will know about me is that I really like to be in bodies of water. Um, this is something I did a lot when I was in the Arctic was go swimming. So I thought what I would do is I would um, walk, try and walk the length of the river coal. And to do that, I made myself a costume using some of these tie dyed fabrics, uh, using and sewing in these laminated things. So uh, here is the mask that I've been wearing when I'm doing this. I'm also very bad at making things I can see in when I make costumes, uh, which I think is quite important that I'm always somehow, uh, it's difficult for me to wear them and to move in them. It's not a kind of easy thing. Uh, so these are the eyes, which are surprisingly hard to see through. I'm gonna put it on quickly, hang on. You can look at the sky. There you go. So there I am. Yeah. Uh, oh, the eyes in the wrong place. Hang on. Classic. There you go. Yeah. So there I am <laughs> uh, in a ridiculous costume. Uh, and so that's the head of it. I didn't bring the whole costume because I <laughs> feel like uh, I don't necessarily want to draw the attention of everyone else on this river. So when I've been doing these performances, they've been at about 5 a.m. Can I breathe in that? Good question, Megan. Uh, yes, it has holes. Hang on. <laughs> uh, I think it has holes. It has some holes. It's not ideal as a costume to be wearing in water, a pillowcase over your head. I will say that. Oh, sorry, I'm in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Dee, dee, dee. Yeah, like I said, it is quite chaotic in that I have to move out the way. Um, but I think that's quite good. So when I do the performance, I do it at like four in the morning, five in the morning. So there aren't millions of people. Also, though, I guess it's kind of the best place to be, to be out of the way of people, is literally in the middle of the river. So, yeah, so basically what I'm doing, and it's in some ways quite simple, is trying to be this kind of figure that is made up of bits and pieces of things I found in the river, uh, bits of trash, so there's a lot of like string, uh, pink plastic bags that I really like that I found. Uh, but trying to kind of not think about like nature, there you go, nature, <laughs> as something that's completely separate from myself or something that's separate from trash or separate from anything else that we encounter. So that's been a lot of what I'm trying to do with this project, but also just on a really basic level to give me a thing that I can do every day that feels like I'm engaging with my own body as well as with the body of water, as well as with, like I said, kind of my local environment in quite a meaningful way. So I won't try to put you underwater because I didn't like that, but maybe I'll just hold you. I'm just going to put on this glove. So, also part of my practice quite a lot, which you might get from the chaotic nature of this uh, Instagram Live, which I could have just done in my studio and would have been quite a lot easier, 
uh, is that I really like quite DIY ways of doing things. So I'll use my iPhone camera. Uh, I am bad at sewing. Bad. There you go. There's me being bad at sewing. <laughs> um, these gloves were used in a previous performance and performances I did in the Arctic and it shows in London. Uh, and I then turmeric them. Would I have done the project with the River Coal if it weren't for COVID? Good question. No, I don't think so. And I think that, so a lot of my work has been thinking about viruses and what they mean and how they are figured. So I'm sure that many of you thought about how like uh, the way, what uh, one of the really bad things that COVID-19 has done is it's tightened borders all around the world. Uh, it's made people kind of more scared of others. So I've been thinking about viruses for a while about that. When this hit and was suddenly really real, I was quite confused. I didn't really know what to do. And so that necessity of being close to home was really important. Uh, and I feel quite grateful for that. I mean, I'm also very grateful that I have a river, as it happens, that runs behind my house. But I don't think that... I think that also it might not have happened because I realized that I've turned into a person who travels a lot. Uh, and I don't know when or how that happened. And I feel very much like there's an ethical imperative to not be a person who travels a lot uh, and kind of think of what that means. So this kind of micro traveling or micro exploration is very much because of the restrictions placed on me. Okay, I'm going to try. What am I going to do? I want to try put you underwater again. Let's see if it works. Okay, so we've ascertained that the internet hates water, which is quite disappointing because I like the internet and water, but so it's quite difficult to put you underwater, but I can send some videos of that happening. Uh, does anyone have any questions for me? I can see kind of, I imagine this is extremely chaotic and weird. Otherwise, I'm going to take you for a bit of a walk back to my house, I think, so you can get a sense of this river and kind of why I would be interested in this project and in kind of trying trying to work out yeah what this space can mean to me yeah I will send you some underwater videos I can't believe that water hates the internet it's so strange okay I'm gonna leave you on the ground Another thing that I wanted to be, one of the reasons I wanted this to be so chaotic, I guess, is that I think what's quite important as an artist, yes, I'll tell you about the bug in a sec. I think what's important as an artist is sometimes you don't know what you're doing until you do it. Like I have no, had no idea why I was tie dyeing things or what I was going to do with them. I just tie dyed like a thousand rags or like why laminating things is maybe exciting. Uh, and then it just all sort of came together into something that I'm feeling pleased with. And even now I'm not 100% sure of what or why walking down this river is important. So, oh yeah, I guess this may be of interest in terms of the bug, is that uh, a strange thing about this area is that there's, so this river is mostly known for going to bog, or mostly bog, which has been kept uh, as an area that's open to the public and hasn't been developed because J.R. Tolkien of The Hobbit uh, and Lord of the Rings was really into the bog and apparently wrote, I mean, I think this is quite a stretch, but apparently parts of his fantasy books were based on this bog. So, and I mean, I like, I also think bogs are great because there's something about like a swamp a bit of muddy water that has so much kind of biodiversity exciting life but it doesn't have that sort of clear ocean uh, sensibility that makes people want to go there so the bog is like a really weird sort of in-between space uh, that you would get in a little bit up here this is a laminated petal 
Okay. I'm going to try and not fall in the water, which could also happen. So, turn around. Stepping. Ah. Maybe concentrating on too many things at once. You can see some, um, I don't know what you would call them in American, but in South African, which is where I'm from, they're called mookies, dancing around, little fly guys. <laughs> oh yeah, it's weird. The J.R. Tolkien thing is really strange. That's also why the mill, people asked me directions to the mill earlier. Uh, that's why the mill stayed open. Very odd. So gonna take you on a little bit of the walk back to my house so you get I'm gonna try and not film the other people on the path uh, but just so you can get a sense of how strange this is and also how yeah I guess it takes some imagination to be excited by this river this space this path etc there's a whole bunch of people not social distancing oh water spiders I think they're more just like little like tiny little flies Miggies, Mickeys. Okay, so there's a bunch of teenagers. I'm gonna walk past the teenagers. Yeah, it, they could be water bugs. I mean, that sounds like what they are. So, I should also add, I said I really enjoy DIYness, which is true and important. But yes, water skaters, yes. But a lot of my work also really relies on other people because. It's me in a costume like that I can't see in, being ridiculous, walking around, falling over, etc. Uh, so, indeed, uh, Megan was really responsible for documenting the stuff I was doing in the Arctic. My long-suffering partner kind of walks next to me and films me walking around. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, that's kind of, yeah, exactly. How's it been at my school? Uh, so yeah, so I work at the Birmingham City University. It is, it's really challenging trying to not be in the studio. I'm sure that you will have this uh, for a lot of our students. Um, the university space and the studio space is where they can be the most themselves and they don't have that now. Uh, I think also what's hard is not having experimentation so when you're like doing stuff online uh, or kind of yeah working online or trying to work kind of in a way that's not in a studio you often forget to do the bit of not knowing what you're doing and you go straight to kind of making something do i use it yes i do I do both, Jason. So I use the documentation as part of video work. I have done a lot of performances kind of more in galleries. So I was going to do a performance on a boat in the Thames, uh, which was obviously cancelled, unfortunately. But I've never invited anyone to kind of outside performances. Um, and I think that would be really interesting. At the moment, it's kind of just... Uh, unlucky and confused people who happen to be around uh, in terms of this performance or when I was in the Arctic it was other people on the Arctic residency this is all elderflower by the way if you like elderflower <laughs> cordial yeah I mean this is you know everything and I think also that's what is exciting when you make work using your own body and you make work outside and you don't know what's going to happen next is that anything can kind of really end up being really important or becoming part of the work but I also that's why I'm like trying not to show other people I'm also careful of whether people have agreed to that or not so now we're, we're getting to Stratford Road which is you'll notice like three minutes from that nice rocky bit uh, and this is kind of one of the busiest roads in the city that I live in. Um, so I guess, yeah, the proximity of these two kinds of environments feels really important to me and to kind of the creature that I've tried to make, uh, to the masks that I'm wearing, to like my whole experience of this space. So you can start to see there's the road 
Uh, there's some music, more people not social distancing. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> Unlucky and confused. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> is the title of the retrospective. Thank you, I did. I mean, often lucky, uh, often confused, yeah. I think confusion is a really important part of the learning process. I guess this is part of what I was talking about. You can sort of see there in the distance is a restaurant that burned down last week. Uh, so that's also part of this. Um, I'm gonna take you to the like trash pile that's also full of rats that I walked through for the first day that I did this performance that was quite stressful. Um, is this my second creature? I think it's like my third creature. So I guess these creatures or characters that I make came from firstly kind of trying to make alien or outside creatures so that it was easier for me to perform kind of as someone else. Uh, this is my second big one. So the, the Arctic alien virus I have used and worn and performed in for a few years. I think this is going to be the next big one. Uh, I think they will now always be site specific after actually getting to be in the Arctic Circle. I think when I made that costume, I had no idea I would end up submerged in water in the Arctic Circle. But when that happened, it was so important. It was such an extremely important part of my practice that now I feel like if I'm making an extension of my body, I also want that ex extension to be part of the environment, if that makes sense. There's some uh, trash. This was quite stressful because it's much deeper than you'd think. So when I was walking through it, I was like, Ugh. uh. So we're getting closer to the main road. And yeah, I suppose that whole idea of like what a site is really changes with COVID-19 because it's not a gallery. It's not, uh, you know, the public is totally different. So what, what a site is, what a public is, there's some more trash. It actually looks surprisingly nice now, but anyway, it's not. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of, as you would have seen, more trash. Oh, also something that maybe I didn't mention is that included in my costume. So when I was foraging, I wasn't just picking up like flowers to put in the costume. Aha, I was also picking up, for example, drug baggies like we see here. Excellent. <laughs> so you can also laminate drug baggies and make them part of your costume because it's also part of like how people are using the space, uh, what's here. I also quite like the leaves uh, in terms of thinking about nature, I guess. So now we are here at the Stratford Road, uh, one of the least sort of bucolic or not a space you might necessarily, I guess, associate with how you think about nature yeah the costume is definitely evolving and is picking up trash as i walk along the river uh the colors are changing even this uh the things are falling off it a lot is Sorry, that was like a really good profound kind of Jerry Springer last note, so I'll just do it again. But <laughs> Yeah, I like to think of the costume as being alive, uh, like the viruses, like we are, uh, like kind of the performances and performance always is, and like these spaces are. And I think, yeah, again, just to sort of see the convergence of these kind of spaces. You can see it's called the Shire Country Park because just a bit of water. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Unless anyone has any more questions, I think I'm going to leave you at the Stratford Road in BC Ceramics. Any thoughts or feelings?
Okay, so yeah, I think I'm just going to leave you with this good old big road. Let me say goodbye. All right, that, hopefully that was really fun and not entirely only chaotic. But if anyone wants to message me questions, then I'm around as well. There's some virus earrings. Dee 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 dee. Bye.